Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Recently I started a series called If You Like This, You Might Love These Games and I'm trying to find popular games that might point you into the direction of finding a new game that you love if you like one of these other ones. Well last week I came out with one that said if you like or hate Monopoly, you might like these because Monopoly was a sort of polarizing game. This week another one of those, if you like or hate this, then you might love some of these other ones. And today we're looking at Trivial Pursuit because it is a very popular trivia game. Everybody, I mean, most homes had this back in the day. Uh, I was at my cabin recently and we have like three different versions of it. And it was funny because we played the game and we're like, wow, this game is so terrible. Because it's like, you either know these obscure answers or you don't, and that's it. And the smartest person, or not the smartest, but the one who tends to know the most about certain things is going to win regardless. So today, some people love that. Some people want the trivia, just want whoever knows the most to win. Other people, not so much. I'm one of those in that camp where I like trivia games, but they've gotta be not just, you either know this or you don't, and you know, that's it. So I'm gonna show you three games that have to do with trivia, but you don't have to know pretty much anything to be compete or even win, and it's a lot of fun. So let me show you all three of these different choices. The first one is called America. And this is from Bezier Games. This is literally one of my favorite trivia games. Uh, it is for two to six players and plays well with all player counts, which is not often in some of these trivia style games. I have a one minute overview to show you how this game works. America is a trivia game for two to six players where you don't need to know the answer. You just need to guess closely or follow the person you think knows best. Each round, a category will come up and there'll be certain questions about the year, the state, and a general number of a specific category. Players will begin placing their markers in clockwise order, selecting either the year, state, or number, and people will be trying to get close, or maybe it'll be next to people that are close, or they can bet that nobody knows it or nobody's even close. Once everyone's either passed or run out of markers, we find out who scores. Correct answers get seven points, adjacency to correct answers get three points, and if you get them right, you get these markers back. If not, they go off the board and you lose them. But have no fear, because at the end of each round, everyone gets one of their lost markers back, and you always get to start with a minimum of three. The board gets cleared after every round, and after six rounds of questions, whoever's in the lead is the winner. Now granted, a lot of the questions in this game have to do with American culture and things like that, so people outside of North America might not like it as much, uh, but it's still interesting that you don't need to know the answers, you don't need to know, you know, you don't have gotta be perfect either, and you just have to be close. And it's interesting because you can hear the question, and if you know at all the people that are playing with you, and you know what their knowledge base is in, and you can see how confident they are of where they're placing their cubes and where they're betting in the states or the, the years or the numbers, you can sort of piggyback on them and be like, you know what, this person knows a lot about sports, I'm gonna follow them, right? You might have no idea, but you're just trusting that they know, and that's kind of cool, because again, it's not like you don't need to know it, you just need to know who you think knows it, or at least who's close. And again, you don't have to be perfect. If you're close, you still get points, which is cool. And if you think the question's so hard, you can bet on people to like, no one's gonna get it, and get points that way. It's just really fun. And watching it, and the sequence of how things happen, uh, and watching what, what's, what's still left over, what's left, and trying to figure out when to stop putting your cubes out, because you don't, you know, you lose them essentially when, when you're wrong. Uh, it just mixes and matches great mechanisms with this. Now this was based off in an earlier game called Fauna, which used a similar system, uh, but more about animals in the world. So that's another one to check out too, but this is more trivia based and things like that. America, great choice. Now the next one is a game that's come out in many different iterations. You can find it at mass market stores. It's called Wits and Wagers. Now originally Wits and Wagers came out and that's all it was called. Then they had Wits and Wagers Family, they had Wits and Wagers Party, and recently the, the version you'll see in stores now is called Wits and Wagers Vegas. So that's the one I'm talking about here. Uh, now the in this game it's all about knowing who is the closest without going over. Kind of like the price is right. These questions are all numerical, like how many steps are there in the Empire State Building? And these questions are designed so that nobody should know this, these things. So you're going into it that's like, there's not gonna be one ringer that's gonna know this. Now there'll be some questions that people might be able to get on, but the majority of them, nobody's gonna get it exactly right. 
So as you're placing these things, everyone's secretly writing numbers down. And once everyone's in, you flip them over and you put them in ranking order from lowest to highest. Now, based upon that, people are going to bet which one they think is the closest without going over. And this is so cool because it's like you look at the spread and you go, hmm, I really think it's this one, uh, 3,506. But the next one above, it's like 3,510. So there's only a range of four that that could be. So do I want to do that? Do I want to go up to the next one? And then there's a big space, you know, or do I want to bet on this one way down here that it pays out six to one, but it's not less, not, not as likely. And it's really cool because the safer bets don't pay you out as high, but, and the really, you know, the risky bets probably not going to win, but you know, if you do, you'll win a lot of money. And as you win more and more money each round, you're able to bet with the things that you've won in previous rounds. It's got like, so this little engine building thing going on, but it's super simple. Answer a question, flip it over. Who do you think has, who do you think is the closest without going over? And again, it's a lot about knowing who's the who knows more about this, right, than me. Um, and it's just it's just a blast. It never it, ne it never um, goes to the point where nobody's having fun. This game, like every time I bring it out, everyone loves it. Also, you can play this. I've played this with a hundred people. I have run events with a hundred kids where you have big tables and everyone is one sort of table together, working together. Uh, it's just very flexible. It's a ton of fun. What's in Wager Vegas? Now, this next one's a little bit off the beaten path. It's not quite a trivia game, but it's somewhat close. It's called Stay Cool, and this is a new one. Let me give you a one-minute overview of how this works. Stay Cool is a party game for three to seven players where you're going to be bombarded by two types of questions. One where you're trying to spell out the answer with dice and the other verbally, but while the time is going, you'll have two minutes. These ones you'll be doing with the dice, like a place to lift weights. Hmm, what is that? Ooh, it's always a three or four letter word, maybe a gym. And while you're trying to figure out what these dice are, this player over there is asking you, which has the longest teeth, dog, dolphin, rabbit, or shark? Well, let's say I spelled gym. They say, correct, it was gym. Then they ask me, you take this when you go sh uh, shopping so you don't forget anything. And over here I say rabbit. It's wrong. They say, well, which has the longest teeth, dog, dolphin, rabbit, or shark? But if you finally say shark, you get it right, they go to the next question. This will continue until the round is over. Then you'll get how far you got down on each of them multiplied like two points times one point for two for that round. Then there'll be a new active player with new cards. There's 1,500 total questions. Second round, you have to say when to flip the timer. If it runs out, your turn's over. Third round, you can't see the timer and you still have to tell it when to flip. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Yes, sure, the real-time aspect of this is pressure, and not everybody's going to like this game. But if you like, if you don't take yourself too seriously, and you're going to watch yourself try to answer simple, easy questions, but not be able to do it because of the pressure of the time, if there's too much, too many things going on at once, and if you're okay with laughing at yourself, being a complete idiot, you'll love this game. Uh, this is one of those games that's like as fun, if not more, to watch than it is to play. Uh, because everyone out on the outside knows all the answers. But when you're on the spotlight, for some reason, you just can't get it. Uh, and it's not necessarily trivia, trivia, like to the standard point. But, you know, half of those questions are, you know, somewhat trivia based where they're asking you questions. Uh, it's not like general knowledge as much. Some of them are. But, you know, it's you're getting asked questions two different types at the same time. So that's what I want to put on this list. It's a little different from the other ones, which is another reason why I wanted this list. But if you're looking for like a fun party game that just, you'll just be laughing at yourself and your friends and it has a little bit of trivia aspect to it, uh, definitely stay cool. It's, it's one of the newer ones that's come out this year. It's probably in the running for my party game of the year so far. Again, not for everybody, but even if you don't want to play it, if you can get your friends to play it, you'll enjoy it just as much as them just by watching that stay cool. All right, well, there you have three choices of games that you might love if you like or hate Trivia Pursuit for whichever reason. Uh, this has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. Did you miss the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear, it's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high quality gaming table with a fully portable Game Topper system and take advantage of some of the best three millimeter premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com.